Hey, I want to welcome you to this uh, video that is called Repurposing Your Content for Greater Impact. And what I'm going to share with you in this video is how you can get off of that hamster recreate content wheel um, or trying to continue to create content when um, you can take your content that you've already created, break it down to share it across your social media platforms. So this way you get out of, you know, being in that place of overwhelmed, frustrated, because you have so much content that you already created, but you keep creating content without utilizing content that you already have. So let's get started. So in this um, video, what I'm going to do, my objective is to help you cut down constantly creating new forms of content, to create forms of micro content from your long form content, to post snippets of your content across your social media platforms, and to draw your target audience to a call to action based on your content objectives. Now, the key thing, um, creating content it is it needs to have an objective. Whenever you see me doing any type of video, I always talk about an objective because how will you know that you're hitting your mark if you don't have an objective? Even if you are measuring your content to see how it's performing, what, what, what objectives are, what key indicators do you have in place to know if you if you met that objective. Because just creating content for the sake of putting it out there to fill a space does not help you in your business. I used to do that. I didn't have any concept of really how my content was performing. And that is something you as a content creator, as an entrepreneur, you want to know is your content performing. And, and there is what I would say, um, there is a time frame because you know it's it's not going to happen overnight. You have to be consistent because I know sometimes you can get discouraged because you're feeling like, well, I'm putting out this, I'm doing lives, I'm doing all this stuff, but nobody's resonating. Let me tell you, people are watching. People are watching. They're gleaning information. They may not say it. They may not, you know, whatever. But people are watching from behind the scenes to see, you know, for whatever their reason is. And this is the reason why you can't quit because if you quit, then guess what's going to happen? Then they're going to just go and scope out the next entrepreneur that is at the point that they're ready to interact or buy or whatever that is, then they're going to do it with them. So why not it be you? Building a business is a long-term Thing. It's not something that you are going to see results overnight. There, there has to be a trial and error. And, and this is what I want to, want to really instill in your thought process is that what you have to understand, whenever, especially when you are starting out from scratch. Let me say this before I continue. You may not know what works or what your audience likes, and it's only going to come from you creating something, even if it's not what they're looking for. At some point in time, as you're measuring it, you're going to say, okay, wow, I've been doing this for maybe 90 days or six months. No one is saying anything. Okay, maybe that's not where I need to be. Maybe I need to switch gears. So at some point in time, you're going to understand what is resonating with your audience. But if you're not looking at how your content is performing, then and you're just continuing to continue to create, hoping like, you know, you take that spaghetti and it, throw it throws it to the wall and hopes it sticks. Mm -hmm. But that's not what you're going to do with your content. You're going to see how it's performing. Okay, let's go on. So now if you are a YouTuber and you are creating content on YouTube in the, you know, in video form, even if you're doing lives on Instagram or creating some type of video content, wherever that may be, you want to start taking that long form video and you want to chop it up and break it up into these different components, into IGTV snippets, to reels, to stories, to a GIF, to a post, you know, to a quote. So right there, what's that, two, four, six? That's six pieces of content. So I'm sure if you have a video on YouTube for even 10 minutes, some of you even go even longer than that. So do you know how many pieces of content that you can get out of that, you can have right here 
anywhere from a month to two months worth of content to put on your calendar. Some of you have so much content that your content calendar can be scheduled for the rest of this year. And, and, that's, and that's easily, you can do that because you are doing sometimes too much, but you're not doing the right thing. Sometimes you have the right intention, but you're not structuring it the way that's going to give you the biggest impact because you want to basically if you were able to right now take all of what I'm showing you right here in in the form of creating your video you know taking that long form video and chopping it up into these different types of content and scheduling it out all the way until December into the new year and you wouldn't have to post nothing else other than you just showing up with some type of spontaneous content or maybe just checking in or whatever that may be, do you know you have the rest of the year to work on 2022? You have the rest of the year to even go in and create videos and do the same thing and have almost half of your calendar filled up for 2022. This is why you need to start doing long form content. This is why you need to be repurposing your content so you can stop overwhelming yourself and, and take that extra time that you now have because you scheduled out your content and start now creating either little snippet videos to get your clients, to get, you know, um, your leads. So this way now you've already had the content out there. So people are knowing what you're doing. They're seeing you show up regularly because you scheduled it out. So now you're saying, listen, I'm, you like my content. This is what I had. Now you can promote the other parts of your business. You can promote that workshop. You can promote that webinar. You can promote that training or that coaching program or that mastermind, because now you have the time to focus in on now the money part of the business because you've covered putting out the educational part, the subscriber part. You've done that work, right? I'm hoping you catch this. Now, podcast. Podcast is so great because a lot of you who don't want to show up on video, who just want to say, well, you know what? I don't have time. To do, you know, I don't, I really don't want to get into video right now. So I'm going to go the podcasting route. And to be, you know, transparent, podcasting has really gotten more popular because there are so many podcasts out there. So this is another way for even your audience who may love video from you, love to see videos, but maybe they're driving or maybe they're going for a walk and they, you know, don't want to look at you, but they want to hear what you have to say. So why not now take that and turn it into a podcast? Even when you're putting it out across your social media channels, which I do show you within this um, training or this video that you basically can take snippets of your podcast key points and put it out there to draw in a new audience. So this way they can say, oh, wow, I didn't even know you had a podcast. Yes, I do. But here's a little snippet of what I share in that podcast. So this way you can come and now you can get all of the goodies that I share within that podcast. So this way, you are still getting the message out there to gain new eyeballs on your content, right? So the next thing is when you're doing blogs, blog posts. If I, I am a blog, I love blogging. I love putting my ideas down on um, paper, on video. I'm not on video on my, my website. And the thing about it is when you have like, I would say anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 words in a blog post. Do you know how much information is in there? You can have your quotes. You can make um, a checklist out of certain key points. You can create a guide, a call to action based on the information that you're sharing. And then you can ask questions to get more people involved in you know, what it is. So this way you can take that information and go back and help them with it. I have had so many people from one blog post that is very popular on my website that is called Surefire Strategies to Growing an Email List. And from that, I had over a thousand people comment on that 
specific blog post. And what they were basically saying is, you know, they loved it, but then they went into different questions. Like, how do I do this? And oh, well, how do I start a blog? Oh, I love your website. Like, how do you do that? How do you do this? You know, what software do you use? You know, what hosting company? So all of these different questions was like, wow, people, people didn't just want to know just the information about how to grow the email list. Aside from that, they wanted to know all of the intricacies of now, how am I doing this? How am I getting it out there? How, you know, did I get my, my uh, website to look that way? So then I said, oh, I designed it. So let me do a blog post on how to start your website. Let me show up, do a pod, not a podcast. Let me do a blog post on how to blog for, for those who are first time bloggers or those who want to start, you know, create their website. Let me give them the real information and what goes into creating this. Because sometimes we get the glamorized version of, you know, starting a website because we think, oh, it's so pretty. And now people will see I have a website. Let me tell you, a website is a lot of work. People don't just come to your website just because you have it up. You have to be very intentional and very strategic when it comes to your website. I am still to this day learning how to optimize my website for the biggest impact. So it never stops. And you have to be very committed to making sure that that website is updated that it is giving you, uh, your, your visitors, the best experience when they come there, that they can find the information that they're looking for. And they're not just seeing a bunch of photos of you, you know, just, just living your best life, even though there's nothing wrong with that. But you want to make sure that when they're coming there, what they're coming there for is they're able to assess it in the least possible time because, you know, people, I, I don't want to say, you know, we hear the thing, oh, people have, have um, what they would say, um, slow attention spans. I'm like, no, that's not true because people will read and consume what it is they want. If you don't believe me, ask Netflix, ask Hulu, ask <laughs> Prime Video, all these shows that have them on demand, people will sit and binge watch their shows for how long. So that means they're interested in that content. You just have to make sure your content is capturing and holding their attention as well. So now I want to take you online and I want to take you through the software that I use to go through my process, but I'm going to take you first through a long form video that I had done earlier this year. And it's going to show you how to go in and just take those different pieces of key information. And then we're going to head over to Canva, which I use every day in my business to help me get my content out across these social media platforms. So let's go online. Okay, now what you want to do when you have your long form video already created, what you want to do is go into that video, um, whatever editing software that you may be using to edit that. And what you want to do is you want to basically, what I would say, scroll through that video and find key points that you brought out. For instance, maybe right here, I would say, okay, creating a marketing content strategy begins with research. So what I would do is I would go in and I would clip that part out. Maybe it's a 30 second clip, or maybe it is even a screenshot that I would take of that specific um, part of the video. And this way I can create it, um, other posts for it across my social media platform. I can basically maybe take it into Instagram and use it as a uh, you know, some information, basically letting my audience know about content creation um, or content marketing, then I can basically scroll on to this part and say, what are they struggling with? Or what is your audience struggling with? And then I can take maybe a screenshot of this as well and put that out there to see what response that my audience is going to give me based on something that I am showing them that is something that I've already created. So depending on how long your video is, like this video is an hour and seven minutes because it was basically a training that I was doing within my um, membership. It is basically something that I also put out on my social media for free. This is just like a portion of it. 
So this way I can help those who need help in basically, you know, getting into the idea of what type of content that their audience likes to consume. Then again, how do they consume content? And you can basically go in here and you can take that audio. Let's see. Upload it to a transcription service. Here's one, T-E-M-I-T -E me.com. So basically I'm giving some type of information within that this video about how does the audience consume content. So this way I can make it into like a video, IGTV uh, video, and I don't have to basically go on live unless I wanna go on live. So let's go on here again. Then I can go through, let me, let me just go to your blog, your different website. parts of the website and I can basically pull out maybe key things that I talked about, maybe a quote that I can basically now make that into Canva, put that in Canva and make it into a quote. Maybe um, I'm on the video and there's certain things that I'm doing within the video with my hands or maybe my facial expressions. And then I can basically make that into a GIF and I can put like a little funny saying there based on something that has already been created. So again, this basically is saying right here, creating content for your platforms. So live videos, post stories, share content from other leaders. Um, also make sure your uh, videos are your, um, what I would say your videos as well as your posts and photos are high quality. So then you wanna make sure you are posting relevant, what I would say relevant media on platforms that they need to be on. For instance, you're not gonna post a video on Twitter because Twitter is basically short form, you know, uh, words. So I think it's 140 characters. Maybe it went up since, you know, the last time I checked. But what it is, is that you can even utilize Twitter in your, in your um, strategy because you can take little keywords as you're going through your content and just write down, I would say maybe four to eight to 12 different types of relevant, like key things that you said that may, you know, be just like a sentence, but it was powerful and it hit home to that point. And then you can tweet that out over the course of, you know, a couple of days, a week or whatever. I mean, Twitter, I know it kind of goes really fast, but if you're not using, utilizing Twitter, what you can also do is you can basically use those those quotes are those um, specific type of information that you're giving out and make it into a post. You can basically go in on here, for instance, when you have clarity in your business, your level of execution goes up. So I can basically take that, crop that out, make a screenshot of it, and then I can take that and put audio behind that and give maybe a couple of other words based on that specific um, post or that what's in the video. So do you understand how you don't have to go and create so much content when you have long form content, especially you YouTubers, you have content on there. Even if your video is five minutes, 10 minutes, do you know how much content that you can get out of that video that you sat there and you talked for five to 10 minutes? I mean, you can make posts for up to two months if you wanted to, based on the information that you was giving out. You just have to go in and pull out key things that is going to help your audience when you post it on your social media or you schedule it out. So I hope this kind of helps you with long form video. And this is the reason why it is so great to do long form video is because you can take that and slice it up into so many different, you know, ways. You can basically even put this, you know, I guess as, you know, behind you on Canva, you can use this and then put a video maybe somewhere around or are you doing a reel or something with your photo in the background as the backdrop of your video. So you just have to get creative and learn how to utilize the content that you have instead of sitting here, you've already maybe created a live video. And now you're sitting here thinking, oh, well, now I got to post on social media. What am I going to post? You go in and you take that video and you break it down into the key things. And here's a little tip. If you want, you can basically go ahead and map out what you're going to be talking about in that video, maybe at certain key I would say points in that video. For instance, at the introduction, you're letting them know the objective. You're letting them know what is the first thing you're going to be talking about. So then the first 
part of that is what is it you're going to be talking about. So break your videos up into segments so you're not all over the place. So when it comes time for you to what I would say, create your social media posts, you know, at each segment of your video, you're talking about a specific key thing. So that's going to help you in even putting out your post out there resizing it to Pinterest. Maybe if you have a call to action within that, you can also take that, um, that, that post that you created. And if you have a workbook or checklist or guide or whatever that is, then you can basically, you know, have them to download that through Pinterest, which is going to send them to your website or either to a landing page that houses that specific key information. So I just wanted to kind of show you how to take your long form video and um, basically break it up. Let's see what is the next part of that. So for instance, if you have any type of maybe training or something you're launching, then you can basically also utilize that for days that you have a promotion or days that you have a launch or days that you want to grow your email list or whatever that may be. You want to make sure again, what I said in my last video, if you have not watched that, then go and check out my last video. I'll link it somewhere up here. And this way you can go and go over those notes, but your content should be doing three things. If not at one time, but all together, it should be bringing awareness or information to your audience about what it is that you do. Um, it should also basically, you know, help you to grow your list. Your, some content needs to be helping you to grow your email list and to get more people into your sales funnel, your, you know, your email list or whatever that may be. And then the third thing is that it should be some type of offer that you are giving them, whether it's a free offer or a paid offer. That is what your content should be doing at all times, whether it is providing the information uh, giving a call to action or promoting something, whether in the free form or the paid form. So you have to make sure that each time you sit down, what do you want that content to do? If you wanted to do all three, then, then go for it. But if you wanted to just do one thing at a time, then you have to be intentional with that. And you have to make sure that your audience is basically understanding the key points that you're bringing out within your content. So let's continue. Okay, now that I showed you how to take your long form content and basically break it up into little clips, maybe 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, however long that you wanna break that content up. But, but remember, you wanna make sure that you are breaking up the content where you are giving a key tip at. You wanna make sure that you are honing in and, and just slicing that up in your editing software, whatever it is that you use. So this way you are getting the key points because if you have a YouTube channel and I'm so sure some of you who have YouTube channels that create videos, you have so much content that you've probably not even thought about going back and taking it and breaking it down. Even if you don't want to go through I would say maybe the breaking down of it, of, of the clips, then you can go in and just bring out, pull out key points and you can make memes of it. You can make quotes of it. You can make post and and just throw just different things out there and I'm going to show you how I use Canva to do that to repurpose a lot of my content what I do my editing in as far as editing my videos I do it in Filmora because within YouTube I can put my you know my intro and my outro and any other things that I want to share within that video but I want to show you how to take long form content, whether it's in the form of a video, a blog post or a podcast and break it up. So this way you're not always sitting here trying to create, create, create. You may have anywhere to 30 posts based on one video. I'm serious. You may have anywhere from 30 pieces of content that you can, you know, schedule out for your social media you know, platforms that you're sitting here and each time you finish creating content, you're back on the drawing board trying to create something else instead of utilizing what you already have. So hopefully this gives you the inspiration to go ahead and go back to some of the videos that you've created and start slicing them up and using, utilizing them because I'm sure that information may be relevant. And 
anything that needs to be updated, then you go ahead and you update it. So let's get started. I'm going to go into my Canva and show you how I do it when I am repurposing my content. So what I do is I go in now, as you see here, this is basically a post that and I mean, this is something that was already a template and I just basically took my photo, removed the background and I just used the template. So let me just show you the template that I used. So I used, uh, I think I came out of that template. So let me just go in. This is the template I used right here. So let me just create another page and just show you for a minute what I use. We're gonna come back to that one that you just seen above. So this is basically, and let me just push that up. Do you see that? This is the same template that I use. I just changed it up. And if you wanna go in and put in your brand colors, you just go in and put in your brand colors and you just go in and put your name or your, your website, whatever that is, and, and you're done. So that's one piece of content that can be scheduled out on my social media page that is a quote that came from some type of long content that I've done, whether in the form of video, audio, or podcast. I want, to, want you to get that in mind. It doesn't matter where it comes from, but you are just taking and pulling key points out and creating it into little snippets across your social media, right? So do we see how that is just like a game changer right there? If I wanted to get a little bit more creative, not even just say a little bit more creative, I could have just took this, put that there, change that background. I'm just giving you like different, uh, like little options of how you could do something and let me just go down a little bit so you can see that. Let's just bring this down. Now, this is going to be where your quote or your tip is going to be. So we're just going to move that down. And I'm going to change that quote icon to my brand color. And I'm going to change that name, which probably would be your name, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go into elements and I'm gonna go into a frame. So I like that right there, right? So I'm gonna take that frame and I'm gonna resize it because you want people to know who is the person that's making this statement, right? And then I'm gonna go back to my photos or my uploads because uploads mean it's a photo that I uploaded. So then I'm going to take that picture of myself. No need to remove the background. And I'm just going to insert it like so into the picture, into that, that frame. And there is my quote that, you know, I can basically give out and, and, and post it. You know, if you want to resize it if you want to change that to make it a little bit more maybe you have more to say than that little bit so you're going to just you know move that around it is so much that you can do and now you have another post now the next that I one that I wanted to show you is this now it came from a template that I did which was I believe it was questions I just typed in just just things that I'm looking for. And so do you see this right here? Let me just show you here. Now, this is the post that I'm, I'm, I'm using. And it's basically, I've took it, I deleted this, but I brought up another frame because this is basically, you know, their, their frame, their, their video. So I can't go in and delete this. I would have to basically go into my elements, go into frames, look for that, iPhone that has that, you know, that frame background, because this is where I'm going to import my video, right? So then I'm going to just take that and resize it. And then all of those little breakout bubbles right there, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use that and put all the little key points that maybe I said in the video, tune into my latest video on repurposing content. And then I'll put the date link in bio. And then how I'm going to find my video is I'm going to go to my folders. 
I'm going to go to where I placed that video and I'm going to go into right here is where you see this. So this is a video of me. Let me explain this. This is a video of me. I'm not even talking. I'm just, I just took a video on my iPhone and I basically <clears throat> just, I had, I, I don't even know if I had the sound on or not, but I was just moving my mouth and making gestures like, like that, right? So this way I can now take this and I can put an audio clip over that to basically look like it is that I'm saying something, even though it's not going to go along with the video, but it's just going to say, you know, tune into my latest video on, you know, the two that is repurposing, you know, your content for your social media platforms. So this is how that can play out. So let's go into Canva and let me just show you more of what Canva does is the reason why I love it. So let me go into audio. Okay, so let me go, okay, audio. So now if you have any audio clips like a podcast, again, break those little clips up, go into that podcast and break up those little clips that you have made a key point and as you see, you know, I mean, Canva has audio within itself. You can choose the audio if you like it or not, but you can also go in and you can upload your own audio. So I'm just trying to go in and find out. Okay, I know where it's at. It's in my uploads. So in my uploads, do you see right here, you can upload media or you can record yourself right in Canva. Like you can record yourself. Listen, let me go into audio. Okay, so you see it saying start recording. So let's just go start recording. Okay, count. Greetings entrepreneurs, my name is Michelle Rowley, AKA The Savvypreneur, and I have a new video that is called Repurposing Your Content. So if you're interested in repurposing your content so you don't have to keep creating and creating content all the time, so I need you to come over to my YouTube page so you can get the tips, tools, and strategies to do so. Hope to see you on the other side. Okay, so we did that, right? So now we're gonna say done, and we are going to save and back to editing. So do you see how it- Greetings entrepreneurs, my name is Michelle Rowley, AKA The Savvypreneur, and I have a new video that is called Repurposing Your Content. So if you're interested in repurposing your content, so you don't have to keep creating and creating content all the time. So I need you to come over to my YouTube page so you can get the tips, tools, and strategies to do so. Hope to see you on the other side. But what you can do is you can always upload your audio clips into um, Canva, as you see right here. You can go upload media. You can even do this on your phone. That's what's so great about it. Go on your phone, record the audio, and just upload the clip into your Canva. Instead of doing it on your desktop, I always go on my phone. I'll do a snippet, and then I'll go in and I'll upload all of that into my Canva, because this way I don't have to worry about having all of those clips and everything on my, um, you know, my computer taking up space. So that's a, a really great way to um, get that done, right? So let me just delete this one because this one kind of, you know, fell through the wayside. So as you see right here, so what you would do is if you wanted to schedule that out, you would click on that, you would go to these three dots right here, and then you would go schedule, right? And then you would put the date you want to schedule and then you would just put the time that you want to schedule. You got to select the channel and that you want to schedule. Now it's going to say M MP4 video. So you want that video because you want that specific content to go out on whatever you know platform at the time. Then you want to make sure you write your captions. You want to make sure you have your hashtags all in there. And then you want to schedule it out and it will be on your um you know, on your uh, calendar. So I just want to show you how that video would look. And I'm trying to find some audio. Let me see if I can find some audio. You want to create more content around those colors because it causes me. Okay, let's find something else. Okay, so let's just say that I just wanted to use that right there. 
that little 17 second, which is my YouTube uh, intro <laughs> music. So what I would do now, I would kind of um, make sure that when I'm creating any type of MP4 videos, let me just say this, when you are creating any type of MP4 videos to upload or to schedule out to your social media platforms, make sure that if you're doing it within Canva that you just um, do that specific one, because if not, what's going to happen is it's going to give you a video of everything that's in this, you know, this page, I meaning it's going to give you a video here, it's going to give you a video there, and you don't want that because these are going to be separate posts that you're going to send out. So basically, what I would do is I would just maybe do a copy. Let's just see, make a copy of the page. So make a copy of the page. So this way, you still have your original that you've created in Canva, but then you have a copy of it, right? So let me just let it finish populating so I can show you. So now what I'm going to do now that I've made the copy is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete these two because I don't want them to be part of my video, right? I only want that one specific to be part of my video. So this is how it's going to look when it's finished. See how that looks? Even though my computer's a little slow, kind of choppy. So you can even, instead of that clip, you can, you can have word, I mean, you can have audio or you can even use the video, you can even record the video with you actually saying something, okay? That is the beauty of Canva. I'm just showing you different variations of what you can do, but you can actually create a 20 to 30 second clip introducing something that maybe you have new, maybe in your long form video, you have something that's basically letting people know about something. So take that clip and upload it and use that and look at how, great that's gonna look right so I just wanted to show you that so hopefully you you know get that get the idea of how you can use canvas so for so many things so now again I showed you I believe I showed you but I'm not sure yeah I did show you so let me just go into okay now what I wanted to show you on this part is basically your stories and your reels for Instagram because Instagram you have a lot of different types of content you can make in the form of you know your regular uh, feed post your IGTV your reels and your stories right because even with reels you can pre-record reels and have them schedule out even within Instagram you can basically record your reels in Instagram or you can do it here and um, basically have them you know, to schedule to go out at a certain point in time. Again, so here is um, in Canva and you would just go to templates. Here is now get to know me. Now, for instance, if you want to do certain um, Instagram stories around people getting to know you about your brand, about your product, whatever that is, you have all of these different types of Instagram get to know me templates. So let's, let's do something like this. Ask me anything. And this is why I just really love um, Instagram, not Instagram, why I really love Canva is because I don't have to go to different platforms to put out certain content. I can do it all from within Canva and the beauty of it, I can even schedule it out in Canva. I can even schedule out my post to go to my Facebook um, page as well. And I'm not sure, don't quote me on it, but I believe you can schedule it out to go even to LinkedIn, but don't quote me on that. So now let me just make this page a little bit more bigger so you can see it. Okay, so this is Ask Me Anything. So based on, you know, the, the question sticker, and, and I believe you probably would get that when you are uploading it to your stories and then you can just put those um those 
I believe they put the stickers there. I'm not sure, but they can basically uh, put the question sticker that they have there. And then when you look at it, then you're actually seeing the different questions that they have. So that's what they can do within Instagram. They can see that story saying, well, ask me anything. And then they can place those question stickers there. And um, then you can reply to them or respond back to them. Again, you can go in and you can change the color, the layout, however you want it to look to be on brand. Um, you can put your picture here. Remember how I showed you how to do that? You just go to your images that you have uploaded. Let's use this one of me and just sync that in the back. I mean, you, you choose whichever one. It doesn't have to be you. It could be maybe just like a stock photo or something. But um, I mean, you get what I'm trying to say, right? So it's basically, you know, how you want to do it. So again, now let's go back to the, um, the templates. So now you have already, and I know this is where I probably have it up too high. You can't see it from like a good place. Okay. So then you want to create another one. So again, you go in and you create um, you use that template, you go in, in and you, if you want to place a stock photo there, whatever it is, again, based on content that you've already created, because you're thinking, oh, what am I going to say? That's what sometimes we so, we, we're creatives and we're like, well, what am I going to say? What I'm going to put in that post, what I'm going to put in that story, well, what do I have to say? Well, what have you already said? <laughs> That's the key. What have you already said? Sometimes when you're trying to think of something to say when you've already said so much and you just have to extract the key points that your audience is looking for. And that's what's going to get you followers, likes, shares, um, you know, subscribers, because it is something that you're saying that maybe somebody else isn't saying or, or articulating in a way that is basically, you know, going to get the attention of their audience. I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter what industry or niche you're in. If you're in the healthcare, if you're in, you know, clean eating, or you are just somebody who likes to bake or cook. I mean, to me, Instagram is so great with the imagery and the photos. Even if you have uh, cooked something or you created a dish, you can take a video of maybe a portion of when it's finished and use that and put that on your stories to say, this is my latest creation and, you know, cook with me on Thursday at, you know, I'm going live and these is the recipes that you need to have and cook with me in real time. I mean, you have to think out of the box um, and just continue to keep putting putting it out there. Don't stop, don't quit because you feel as though, oh wow, this was a perfect post and nobody even liked it. This was a perfect post and nobody even saw it. Let me tell you, there's times I've put out posts that I'm thinking that, wow, somebody should really resonate with this post, but they didn't. But maybe a couple of weeks or a month later, then I'm seeing all these people coming and just liking so many posts that I've done maybe a month before. It doesn't matter when it hits, it's going to hit when it's supposed to hit, okay? So you just keep creating and doing what you're supposed to do, but do it smart, okay? We're not going to be all over the place. So now here is Reels. Now, if you want to do Reels within Instagram, because we know Reels are very popular, so we're thinking of, you know, at one point in time when Reels first came out, we've seen all these people doing Reels and they're pointing and pointing and pointing. I mean, I've even done it myself. But now, as you see, now people are using voiceovers. You get creative. Don't do something that the norm or the mass is doing. Do something and switch it up. Because basically, to me, Reels is, real is just can, can be a story. It doesn't always have to be you on the um, Reel. It can be something like, uh, let's say, let me just find something. It can be words on a background with an audio. It doesn't have to be you per se, but it has to be something that catches the attention of your audience. So I'm just waiting for this to load up. Again, I don't, my computer is kind of choppy or slow with the, um, the loading time. So let me just give that a couple of more seconds. So this right here is, um, you know, you just take, again, 
content that you already created and put it in the place. Look at these templates within Canva as the design of it has already been created for you, right? The design has already been created for you. The structure, how it's supposed to stand out has already been created for you. Now, all you have to do is go in and take the content you've already created and now put it in those different places. Put the photos in those places. Put your fonts in those places. Put your color, brand colors in those places and boom, you've made it your own. Okay, so I hope that that helps you. So this way you don't be overwhelmed with the creating process. Um, how you would do if you are creating any workbooks. And what I wanted to show you also that you can do, especially I'm one who loves to do presentations. Like I like to instruct through visual aids, like letting people see certain things. I think that we all have different ways that we learn. So when you learn how your audience consumes content, creating multiple, uh, creating multiple things of different types of content, like video, audio, podcasting, it doesn't have to be hard where you have to stop and create each one. You have, um, you know, all different types of software that you can create that with sometimes with one, I always say this, with one platform. I use Zoom. Zoom gives me video and audio. So I can utilize that audio even in a podcast. But because I teach a lot with using presentations, especially in Canva, what I can do is take that presentation and turn it into a e-guide or a workbook and just maybe add a couple of more touches to it. But I don't have to go and create the wheel all over again. And, and for some of you, you teach that way. You have so many presentations on your computer. Why not take that and make it an e-guide? Make it something where you're growing your email list. Remember what I said, your content should be doing three things. It should be informing and educating. It should be helping you to grow your list of subscribers. And it should also be helping you to promote your, um, your services and your products. So make sure that you know, when you're sitting down again to create any type of content that you identify what that content is to do. Like, what do I want? I mean, even with this that I'm making right now, there is a two purpose, you know, twofold purpose to this content. It is to educate you and equip you in how to repurpose your content, which also I'm going to create a repurposing guide that's going to help you to go ahead and have the breakdown of how to do that for those who need a visual or need a guideline to follow when it comes to repurposing their content. So that way I can grow my subscribers, subscribers list as well as I am informing them how to do a certain task. So I hope that this has helped you. I hope that when you are, you know, not even to say when you're creating content, let's, 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 let's pause the breaks there. What content have you created within the past three months? that is still relevant to your audience. Go back now, sift through those videos, those blog posts, those podcasts, and now start going back and repurposing it. And you can go ahead and download that repurposing guide. So it will help take you step by step in how to do that. So you can now, you know, get off of that, you know, content creation hamster wheel of always trying to turn out content. So I hope that this has helped you. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And, you know, if you have any, any questions or um, anything that you want to ask me or any content that you want me to create for you in the form of, you know, this entrepreneur space, digital marketing, email marketing, then let me know and I'll create a video to help you with that. Have a great day and I'll be with you in the next video.